Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody's having a, a great, great weekend. Hope everybody had uh, a really good, strong uh, trading week. Uh, very, very aggressive moves in the market. We'll talk about that in a second. And hey, hopefully you guys are just living your best lives and that's the name of the game. Healthy, happy, and always with a smile on your face. So let's talk about the market. Okay, actually, first of all, let's just talk about something that uh, I, I think a lot of new traders have a really good question. Okay, you guys always hear me talking about collecting data, right? And a lot of traders, a lot, of, especially a lot of new traders, always ask, well, well, what are you talking about collecting data? What is this data are we collecting? Is it economic data? What, what's, what's going on with this data collecting? I, I, I truly believe one of the most important parts of trading is gathering information. Okay, uh, information comes uh, several main sources. Okay, technical analysis is obviously um, gathering data. Okay, uh, any type of political or news events that are being embraced or shunned by the markets is obviously collecting data. Um, watching options order flow, like people, you know, like again, I'm not an options trader. Okay, I'm probably one of the most, even though I'm doing this for 20 years, I'm probably, I would say, one of the biggest novice when it comes to options, okay? I know long puts, I know long calls, I know all, all that good stuff, but I don't know how all that stuff works. I don't know what any of that stuff means. Gamma, shmamma, blah, blah, you know, I don't know any of that stuff. I'm an equities guy. But the most important part is you don't need to trade options to gather options, uh, options um, data. And one of the things I've been doing now for for good, you know, four or five months now is collecting data order flow. So for example, if I'm watching Tesla, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, if I'm watching Tesla and I'm looking for a long in Tesla and there's a confirmation channel that's going to confirm or a sneaky channel that's going to confirm and then all of a sudden I see a guy come in and bets $1.5 million on you know Tesla stock with $10 out of the money with three days of expiration. Again, I don't need to be the smartest guy in the world. I don't need to trade options. But I know this guy's putting out a very, very aggressive bet that he believes the stock will explode. So that kind of confirms with my pivots, it's going to give me, it's like holding an extra ace in your hand. You're going to bet aggressively with that order flow. So again, looking at, uh, obviously looking, engaging uh, option order flow is a way to collecting data. Uh, another way of collecting data, and I think this is a very, very important way, is just kind of watching order flow. Okay, watching order flow, especially if you're new traders, and I say this all the time, screen time is one of the greatest greatest vehicles for you to build confidence, for you, for you to have an idea of what's going on in the markets, that it's free for you. Okay, You don't need to pay anybody to read order flow. You don't need to pay anybody to stare at your level two. And the most amazing part is the traders will come back to me and say, well, what is level two? Why is level two important? How, do I need level two? And it's like me saying, what do you mean? How do you, how do you trade without level two? How do you trade without the total view of the marketplace? How do you trade without seeing all the bids and all the offers that the market participants are giving you more information. If there's reload buyers, reload sellers, aggressive buyers, aggressive sellers, all that good stuff. You know, level two is, is until I got onto social media, I, I didn't know that people weren't even using level two, had a subscription to level two. Of course you need level two. It's like playing basketball without the rim. It doesn't make sense. Of course you need level two. You can't skim on your business. So by watching the level two and you're watching a buyer come in, uh, and accumulating stock for several days, that is, right, that is accumulating information. So when you do your homework, okay, you're, you're not doing your homework and planning and trade three minutes after you wake up to look at the pre-market high list. Your homework and your ability to have an opinion is formulated sometimes over several days. So here's a perfect example, right? So Tesla had this big, big run, right? Huge, huge run this week. Really, really big run, right? In the previous week, you saw a really, really big decline, and Tesla's been an absolute phenomenal trader, both ways, long, short, just both ways, been a phenomenal trader. Again, we have no idea what's going to happen to the stock a year from now, two years from now, but we know because we, again, collect data that 
Again, there's a phenomenal trading opportunity both ways, and there are really aggressive market participants making bets on both sides of the market, giving it a very, very good high probability directional bet. Okay, so Monday, right? Monday when the stock was trading, I think it was trading like 82, uh, 82, 83, uh, maybe it was Tuesday, 82, 182, 183, you just saw a guy come in with $1.5 million bet on the weekly 185 calls, right? That's collecting data. You know there's a buyer there. So once it started confirming, right, once it started confirming above this 187 level, you had the confidence, right? You had the ability to understand that the stock has been just down just, just tremendously uh, over the last you know, several months. And oh, by the way, now it's confirming what I call the birth of the trade, the 10 day moving average. So collecting data is very, very important, right? Incredibly important. And as you started seeing that, you started seeing people follow in the 190s, the 195s, the 200, 205s. It got so aggressive that by the middle of that day, you started seeing guys go out one point, there was two separate bets, 1.1 million uh, on the 240s of all things. Then another guy came in, probably the same guy, $1.8 million bet on the July 240s. And for the next two days, you have this really, really big aggressive run to 211, which I believe short term uh, could be a double top. And you'll see why. And we'll just talk, to, talk about that in a second. But it's so crucial for new traders. You know, you have to understand that the stock market is not cut and dry. Trading is not cut and dry. It's just not well, if the stock is breaking out, let's buy the stock. Well, what happened to the stock in the previous days? Why was there so much, you know, why did the stock do what it had to do? Was there any type of evidence that suggests that the stock will go higher besides technical analysis? And a perfect example of that was a trade that we had on Friday on Netflix, right? So here are the pivots, and you'll only see there's only four pivots. Uh, I took half of the day off. I logged off around lunchtime. I celebrated my, my, I was going to say 39th birthday, I celebrated my 45th birthday, uh, so I was out for the day. But you know, here is a perfect example, again, collecting data. We were watching Netflix for three days, okay, three days, and as the market was rallying, it was kind of going sideways. If you guys remember, towards the middle of this really, really big rally that saw the indexes up over 4% pretty much on all of them, you started seeing kind of in the middle of the week, like Wednesday and Thursday. Amazon did nothing, Netflix did nothing, Alibaba did nothing, NVIDIA did nothing, just kind of going sideways. But I was watching Netflix, again, I only trade, I pretty much trade the same nine stocks all the time, and they're always in front of me. So I was watching Netflix as the last move of the market, right before we rallied again, started going aggressively down. And there was a guy sitting there at 352.50, he bought 25,000, right? An hour later, okay, an hour later, he came out and he bought more, bought another twenty twenty five thousand at like three fifty four, and then he, again the next day he was bid at three fifty five and change for another twenty thousand. That's called gathering information. That's called collecting data. So I knew once it broke, or at least attempted to break this three fifty nine level. Okay, you can see a huge buy in the last three days. Once it broke that three fifty nine level, not only did it give me the confidence via technical analysis. I started checking the check marks, the other check marks to validate how aggressive this trade potentially could be. The reload buyer, right? Reload buyer for, uh, for two, three consecutive days. And you saw all the beta names wake up at one time. And the ramifications of that was a pretty aggressive trade, right? Really, really aggressive trade. Um, and here's it. Here's the, I knew technically, right? 359 was the spot and the stock exploded, absolutely exploded. So the moral of the story is, guys, uh, I guess, technical analysis, check, check, right? Very, very important, in my opinion, is the most important part of collecting data. News events, again, it's how the market reacts. Remember this, new traders. It's not the news that's important in the market, it's how the market reacts. So, for example, the China news has been going on for two years, right? Almost two years now. And every single time there's a, you know, uh, optimistic headline, we'll get a deal done, the market rallies, you get a pessimistic headline, well, you know, we're not even gonna close the market tanks. And what you saw, for example, last Friday is what we talked about in last weekend's video of, are the sellers going to get tired? This market will only start going higher 
if the sellers go get tired. So again, if you watch last week's vi video, that's exactly what we're talking about. The sellers potentially getting tired and not only did the sellers potentially get tired, we got a headline out of left field. Well, now there's a, a trade talks with Mexico. I don't know if Mexico had, we had a problem with Mexico. And what the market did was, was completely negate, absorb, right? And push this tariff Mexican headline completely to the side, right? The same tariff news as China that's been, that's been kind of sitting over us for two years. But instead this time, again, gathering information, okay, collecting data, we knew the market was sold off for seven straight weeks. We knew the sellers were potentially getting tired. And now the same tariff news that was involved with China is in Mexico. But again, the market got tired. We became numb. We became comfortable. And that's when sellers really, really started to get run over. So uh, again, technical analysis is great, guys. But for new traders, again, try to collect the data as much as you can. And the easiest way to do so, and I, and I say this all the time, the easiest way to collect data specifically on individual names is trading the individual names. Again, if you want to trade uh, drillers, you know, oil names, get comfortable with a group. If you want to trade internet stocks, get comfortable with the group. If you want to trade pot stocks, get comfortable in a group. When you're trading random stocks, there's, it's, it's much harder to collecting data because you're trading the hot stock of the day. You're not trading the stock that you're watching, you're familiar with and trading all the time and have some sort of, some sort of uh, reputation with uh, you're trading a random stock. So when I'm watching Tesla, I watch Tesla every day. Long, short, sideways doesn't make a difference. When I watch Netflix and I see order flow coming in, again, I'm comfortable with the stock because I trade it every single day. So my tip to you guys, not only, uh, first of all, get level two for all you guys who are still sitting and saying, well, do I need level two? Yeah, you need level two. Again, it's like playing basketball without a rim. You need level two. You need to see the all the aggregated uh, orders. You need to see uh, who's buying, who's selling. Again, that's not going to tell you the directional bias, but at least it'll give you an, another opinion, another piece of the puzzle to collect to try to confirm uh, your thesis and put on the trade, um, put on the trade correctly. So let's talk about this week again. Monster, monster mu uh, views and moves and all that good stuff uh, in the indexes. Uh, all the indexes pretty much over four uh, percent to the upside. Uh, not only did the Nasdaq 100. Uh, reclaim uh, the 50 and, uh, and rec excuse me, reclaim the 100 and the 200 day moving average. In two sessions, it reclaimed the five, which is again, very, very important to me. It gives me short term sentiment. It confirmed the 10, confirmed the 100 AMA. And now we are on our way to this 183 uh, potential measure, potential, uh, potential on the QQQs. Uh, and again, the, the news that came out uh, after or uh, well, over the weekend was that apparently we've, there's some sort of resolution, right? Some sort of resolution with Mexico. Was Mexico really a problem, right? I mean, Mexico was like a, was it really an issue? I mean, the, the headline came out Friday that they absorbed and negated the headline from Monday to Friday. So is this really going to be, uh, the, you know, the market gapping up another 300 points? Maybe it will, right? Maybe it will. And if you are long over the weekend, God bless. Um, I, I'm, I'm flat over the weekend. Unfortunately, I don't have a position. But at the same time, you know, again, was Mexico really worth it and, you know, worth it to put even a headline that something got resolved, that it was an issue for like 15 minutes? So look, can it, can it be one of those, um, you know, gap and crap scenario after it tests and gaps up to the 50 day moving average? It has to be on the table because again, technical analysis trumps everything, uh, no pun intended, or maybe pun is intended. But again, if we do gap up into this 183 40s level, you know, it could be a very, very, you know, significant sign that a reversal could be coming, at least for the day. Again, nobody's saying we're going back to the lows. And still, until we start losing back this 174 level, the 200 day moving average, I don't want to hear about we're going back to the lows. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. But again, it's baby steps. When a baby is born, you don't, you know, you don't, the baby doesn't, you know, start running. The baby, first of all, needs to learn how to hold up its neck and then learn to sit up and learn how to crawl. And then the baby starts walking. So before anybody has a macro opinion, well, we're going to all time highs. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. Oh no, this is a dead cat bounce. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But again, don't have an opinion based on what you want to see. Okay. And you read in the newspapers, have an opinion based on technical analysis. So far, so good, really aggressive rally. Let's see what happens. I think that's the best way of saying it. Let's see what happens if the futures are significant enough 
uh, to push the QQQs into the 183.40s level. And let's see what happens. If the bears defend that level, then yes, it will be a you know it will be a shorter term top, maybe a day or so, uh, whatever the case may be. But again, I'm not a bull, I'm not a bear, I'm a realist, I'm an opportunist, and I trade reality. So really strong week, right? Really, really strong week. Buyers everywhere. Okay. And last week, again, just kind of touch on it. Last week in the video, we talked about the only way. Okay. And I said this, uh, and I said this pretty clearly. The only way the market was going to stop going down, and it sounded funny at the time, but that's the truth, if the sellers got tired, okay, if the sellers got comfortable, the sellers got tired, and they just have no energy left. Again, it's like, you know, you're, you're training for a marathon, okay, you're training for a marathon, and you run, you know, 26 miles, right? You just ran that 26 miles, the marathon is over, and then you realize you have another mini marathon three days from now. You're going to be tired, even though, again, you're in that directional bias, you're prepared, everything is going for you, but you're tired. Sellers get exactly the same way. We went down for seven weeks, okay, almost seven weeks in all the indexes. It was very highly probable that a dead cat bounce was going to happen. Again, nobody thought four, four and a half percent, okay? But again, it was highly probable. So if you were shorting the market, okay, maybe I'm not talking about individual stocks, but if you were shorting the market after the Mexican news kind of got brushed off to the side on Monday, okay, and you had conviction, well, what were you doing the previous seven weeks, right? It's a fair question. Like, what were you doing the previous seven weeks? Again, nobody's saying you're, you're not going to be right or wrong long term. But the common sense is, well, the market's down seven weeks in a row, okay? This is the first sign of life. This news has been kind of over our heads for like 30 seconds, I'm being sarcastic, on the Mexican news, right? That's being negated. Why am I short, right? Why am I short? Sometimes, again, technical analysis is skewed by common sense. And you have to take, kind of take a step back and say, well, wait a minute. Market's down seven weeks in a row. Amazon's down like 150 points on like, a, like a week, okay, two weeks. Well, why am I being short the stock? And if you take sometimes take a step back and really ask you things, these things out loud and you actually hear them, you'll kind of start to chuckle and you'll realize that sometimes you're just wrong, right? You're just wrong in your thinking. And before it becomes a monetary problem, you got to take a step back and really look at the market from common sense. So big, big rally, uh, big, big rally. Hope everybody did well. Very, very aggressive moves. Uh, Tesla was a monster. Amazon was just, just ridiculous. Okay. Amazon ridiculous. Netflix, I finally caught that stupid thing. I caught it on Monday. I caught it on Monday and it took like three days of, 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 of it doing absolutely nothing. I finally caught it on Friday. Uh, so that was good. Amazon was, the semis finally woke up. Talk about, again, mirroring the market, right? So the semiconductors have been just, just murdered. I mean, absolutely murdered. And you could see it pretty much a mirror image of the NASDAQ 100, the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Again, they had the most exposure, right? They, they you know, arguably, they have the most exposure to China because they all make chips there, right? So eventually, again, nothing materialistically changed from Monday, right? For excuse me, from Tuesday than it was for the last couple of months. But again, sellers got tired. And again, once they reclaimed the 10-day moving average, that was kind of a green light for the rest of the market and very, very uh, strong session. So going into this week, again, you have to a little bit, a little bit. I'm still, I don't want to use the word bullish. Uh, and for, for me, I, I think the, the, the word bull and bear, okay, is kind of like 10 years ago. Okay. Uh, Any time that, and first of all, the market has been going out for seven weeks. Okay. Um, there's been plenty of opportunity for people to ch chase stock. And when you see people chasing stocks, how can you turn around and say, well, there's still a bear market? There could be a bear interval. There could be a sell bias. But I think the word bear market and bull market, old school, right? It's like bell bottoms, right? Old school. A lot of you guys are going to turn around and say, what the hell is a bell bottom? Anyway, right? Old school. So I, I think most important going into this week, you have to be bullish bias, right? Buy bias. But again, there will be opportunities on the sell side. And we'll talk about uh, that in a second uh, that I think we can take advantage of. So going into this week, this is the most important part uh, to see on the NASDAQ 100. The reason why I, I emphasize the NASDAQ 100, it's the stocks that I trade. I trade every, you know, pretty much uh, all the names in the NASDAQ 100. I don't care about the downs, 30 stocks. I don't care about the IWM that's represented the majority by retail. I care about the NASDAQ 100 because, again, Amazon, Google, Facebook, Alibaba, Tesla, Netflix, all that good stuff I trade. So this represents 
my comfort zone. It doesn't mean yours, my comfort zone. So this is what I uh, talk about. So uh, the day of reckoning, at least for the short term, will be this uh, 183. Uh, 40s level uh, for the NASDAQ 100 bulls. If they can reclaim that level, that's great. If the bears uh, kind of reject them and give them the Barry Sanders stiff arm, right, then we will start rolling back around. But again, before anybody talks about destruction of price per share, all we are talking about is for a potential back test back to this 180, maybe into this 177 level before the bulls need to take another stand. So again, this is the level we are watching. In case we don't gap up, gap up for whatever reason, uh, yeah, there's a measure potential to 183. So trade your stocks uh, accordingly. Uh, very, very good solid week. Uh, Friday, again, uh, as you've been following me now for, for a long, long time, you know, Fridays have been just, just absolutely ridiculous. I can't figure out why. Again, I kind of in my mind have an opinion why, maybe because, again, there is no fear in the market and people are making speculative bets because of the options market and sometimes they will dictate uh, higher price stocks or uh, lower price stocks. But Fridays have been really, really good. And all these wives tale about summer trading is slow and all that stuff is slow. Again, it all depends what you trade. I trade beta. These things have the biggest ranges. It doesn't make a difference to me if it's summer, spring, fall, Easter, Flag Day, Groundhog's Day. They're all going to give you value because of their average shoe range. And again, um, these are the four names that triggered right at the open, uh, right at the open. And they were huge. So uh, Netflix... Uh, Netflix, I only took two trades on Friday. Netflix, uh, I took it to the upside and then I tried to bounce Tesla that only put up like a 30, 40 cent bounce. I got broke even on that. Um, and then I just left for the day. I celebrated my sweet 16, allegedly. Um, so yeah, 45 years old, man. Ugh. Anyway, uh, yeah, so Netflix was huge, huge buyer for the last three days. Again, going back to the collection of data, uh, 359 needs to reclaim. Uh, again, here was Netflix. Uh, here was the 359, right? Here was the 359 right here. All this whole channel here going back to the fifth. So we had three days of collecting data. And once it broke 359, absolutely exploded. I told everybody in the live webinar, it should get to 65. Why 65? Because 65 was the upper Bollinger Band. Look where it got rejected perfectly. So this is obviously going to be the line in the sand going uh, forward. Uh, and then Square went nuts. Square went absolutely nuts. Congratulations for you guys who, who got Square. Uh, needs to reclaim uh, Needs to reclaim uh, 66, the pre-market high, 66 and a quarter. So it has to confirm. If you look at Square, I love that daily coming in. Uh, the daily chart, again, was this uh, 65, 64, 65, 87. And once it confirmed... Uh, the pre-market highs right here at 66, you know, 25, 30, just absolutely exploded. Went to 69, so huge, huge move uh, there. Uh, ZM, talk about a big move, man. ZM was up a lot on earnings, and 92.50 was right around the pre-market high. That was just sitting there and consolidating. So we knew once it, it started to build over the 92 and a quarter, it had a shot, a shot for a really, really big move. Again, nobody thought it was going to go up another seven, eight dollars, but. Hell, you know, here's the, you know, here's the, the 92, uh, excuse me, here was the 92.50, right? Here's the 92.50 and just absolutely exploded. Really, really exploded with like almost 99. Uh, and Boeing, again, not the biggest move. Again, congratulations to you guys who did catch Boeing. Uh, Boeing, you know, here's the Boeing right here. We talked about 50, what was it? 50, what was the spot we talked about? Uh, hold on, hold on. 53.75.54, Yeah, so 53.75. Oh, where was it? 50, oh, here, 5375, 54, and it went to like 55 and a quarter, which I kind of like for uh, Monday. It's not on our on our on our um, it's not on our watch list for Monday, but I kind of like it. We'll talk about it. Um, I kind of like it if it confirms this upper linear regression line. Um, so good moves there. I mean, really, really good moves there. Uh, again, what you guys don't see, uh, if for all you guys who are on the Twitter feed or the stock tweets feed. What you guys don't see are these bounce plays that we play every single day. And I tweeted something out. I tweeted something out and, you know, you, you could clearly see why, um, why it's so it such a big move here. So um, I tweeted out, let me just show you the stock to its feed. So I tweeted out um, on BYND, right? BYND had... Uh, BYND had a really, really big move on earnings. Again, uh, it really does show the, you know, the potential of how Wall Street loves paying for potential. Okay, growth stories they love, all that good stuff. And 
I, I wrote here, and you can see what happened to the stock after. And this is why it's so important, guys. Again, we, we, we play a lot of these bounce plays and rejection plays in the live webinar that I don't put on the Twitter feed. But it's so important to understand where emotional sellers meet technical buyers and where technical sellers meet emotional buyers. And here is a perfect example. Uh, I tweeted this out and I go, hey, for all you guys who are in BYND, and I didn't trade this at all on Friday, I said, hey, 12070 is rising support. Okay. It was rising support on the 60 minute. Let's see if the shorts get trapped and the stock sees new highs. And it trapped them perfectly on the bottom of the channel. And, you know, obviously you see that since the post, stock ran up, it was actually up more, it was probably $15, $16. But the point is, it's so important, guys, to understand, even if you don't trade pivots, it has nothing to do with pivots, it has nothing to do about uh, trading with me. But the point is, if you don't know where supply and demand zones are, you're trading blind. If you think level two is a problem, you have an issue with level two, try to buy a stock into supply and see what happens. Try to sell a stock or get short into a stock into a rising demand zone, right? And you will see exactly where the biggest problem is. So again, nothing to do about pivots. It's just basic technical analysis. So uh, let's get, let me give you guys some ideas for uh, Monday's session. Um, I love Tesla short or long, but short. So let me tell you why. So 211, right? 211, it got rejected. 211, 211 here, right guys? Everybody see that? 211, 211. So if the stock really wakes up on Monday, right? And it breaks 211, obviously I'm going to be long, right? That is the line in the sand. There's no, again, there's no room for interpretation. 211 is the high here, 211 is the high here. So if it breaks the 211, I think the stock has a chance to go higher. Because again, remember those bets were pretty aggressive. Uh, some bets came in 217.50, some bets came in the 240 uh, July calls. But, but what I've seen now over the last 24 hours is getting rejected off this daily supply. So if it starts building and confirms this bottom channel here, I think there's a shot. If it starts confirming that bottom channel, I think there's a shot it gets back to the five-day moving average, which is roughly around between 195 and 192. So I am sell biased, but again, I won't have any reservation or have any problem switching my ground and start taking it back above the 211. But we are watching it to the downside on a sneaky channel uh, to the short side in case it gets confirmed. So let's keep an eye on that. Um, I like Facebook. Okay, I like Facebook. Uh, Facebook reclaimed, again, a lot of issues, the antitrust issues, all that good stuff. If Facebook can start building, you can see by the 60 minute view, if Facebook can start building above the 174 area, I think it has a shot. I think it has a shot, again, contingent if the market continues to rally. So I like that. Let me see what else I want to talk to you guys about. Uh, let me give you guys some other ideas here. Um, I like I like this OUT. Um, I forgot. I think it was a C from the live webinar who uh, mentioned. I, I like it. I, I, I've never even heard about the stock, but it looks pretty good, right? OUT looks pretty good. It starts building uh, over uh, twenty six. Pretty bare bones uh, pattern. You don't need to be you know really you know professional trader to figure out this is a pretty good looking pattern. So that looks good as well. Um, I like BYND on dips, uh, any dip, obviously, uh, any dip at all, any dip into rising support. If the market opened up now, obviously, 128 would be a rising support. Obviously, this is going to move around tomorrow. So for all you guys who are in the live webinar, please get there uh, at bright and early at 9 o'clock. Uh, I like BYND into, Z into dips. Uh, I like uh, ZM into dips as well. I like that as well. And I kind of like Pinterest, right? They, they didn't have a great earnings report. So the stock paid for it. And you can see it stopped right on supply, right? It stopped right on supply here on this linear regression line. If it starts reclaiming, right, that one, you know, let's say 128, the, the 28 level, right? If it starts reclaiming that 28 level, maybe it wakes up and has another run to 30. So pretty good ideas there. And I think that's about it, what I want to share with you guys. Uh, everything else uh, is beta related that I kind of want to uh, see how it opens up. So for all you guys who are joining us in the live webinar tomorrow, please get there around nine o'clock. You can't roll in three minutes to the open and say, well, what are we looking at? I mean, I, I, you know, I, I, I speak 25 minutes prior uh, to the open to kind of get everybody set up. So please get there bright and early. Uh, and for all you guys who are joining us on the live Twitter feed, uh, we start putting in these pivots uh, around 9 o'clock, 9.05 to get you set up for the day. So guys, have an awesome, awesome Sunday. Uh, and go enjoy your life and God's help. We'll see you all in the future tomorrow. Take care, guys. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire.
Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.